Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Natasha the Unconventional Aussie and today's video is going to be the third and final part of my journey to Islam. If you haven't seen the first two parts, definitely go and check those out first before you watch this one. And if you have seen them, let's crack on with part three. Now where we left off at the end of part two was that I'd managed to put aside all the negative feelings and I'd managed to put aside me caring about what people thought and prioritize my faith and my belief and accept Islam and take my Shahada. So my Shahada wasn't um, in the main prayer hall, which it normally would be. It was in just the Imam's office and this is because of the pandemic. So it wasn't um, a congregational event. It was a really intimate and personal um, time and it actually was really special. So I'm not sad at all that it wasn't how it is normally done. I really benefited from it being a small thing and it enabled me to really appreciate the time and appreciate that moment and made me really reflect and realize that I'd just been on such a massive journey in such a short space of time of me coming from somewhere that I had such negative outlooks towards Islam and now I'm sitting in a mosque in front of the Imam ready to take my Shahada. So I was really able to soak that all in and just, it was really overwhelming, but in a good way. I was so happy. I was so excited and I was just, I felt really grateful and really blessed to be there and have the opportunity to be there. As I mentioned in my previous video, it was the same imam that did mine and Osman's nikah. So it just made it even more special because we already had that relationship with him and he was so happy for the both of us and just so happy for me. Um, he did actually say that when he did a nikah, he made dua for me and he hoped that he would see me again. Um, and the next time we saw each other, I would be a Muslim. And here we were and he was actually doing my shahada with me so it was just amazing and it just yeah it just topped off the day and just made it that much more special so we we did my shahada and then um obviously we got home and the biggest question that oz and i had was now what i've accepted islam i'm now a muslim where do i go from here so we called up oz's brother to kind of get some advice and he basically said that the best thing for me to do is to start to learn how to pray so osman and i um we were like yep let's do it so oz taught me how to do wudu which is just to sum it up really quickly um it's a cleansing um, process that we go through particularly before prayer and it's just to purify ourselves and that's just to put it like give it a really quick explanation um so i learned how to do that i'd got a notebook and i'd written down the sequence of that so that i could start obviously doing that by myself um, before each prayer and then um i did the last two prayers of the day so i took my shahada on the monday and there was two prayers left so i did those prayers with osman i didn't say anything i just stood behind him copied him with the actions and followed along that way and I did the same thing for the next morning prayer. Um, so Fajr prayer, I did the same thing, just stood behind him, followed the actions. And then I had a few hours to prepare for the whole. So I got online, we looked up some videos. Um, again, I wrote down in my notebook, the actions and the things to say paired up with those actions so that by the time the next prayer came around, I could join in not only just with the actions, but also trying to say and give it a go on um, saying the first surah of the Quran. So obviously it's in Arabic. So my pronunciation definitely needed some work, but I tried my best and I managed to get through um, that prayer with Osman. And then he had to go to work. So I was left to fend for myself for the remaining three prayers of the day, which I was really anxious about and I was really overwhelmed about. Um, so I, again, I just jumped online and I spent a good couple of hours writing some more things down, practicing my pronunciations and really trying to understand um, the different sequences or rakats as um, they, um, we call them. And yeah, just kind of trying to get in my head and trying to grasp everything and grasp the concept of it. So when the time came around to me doing it by myself, 
Um, it started off really well and I got through the first ricard, so the first sequence, and then I just had a complete meltdown. I got really confused at what I was doing. I couldn't work out if I'd done one or two and I just was so overwhelmed. I just burst into tears and I just, I just <laughs> gave up and I called Oz and I was like, I can't do this. And he reminded me that I hadn't even been a Muslim for a day. So just chill out, do the best that I can and we can work on it when um, he got home. So obviously me being me and I'm a bit of a perfectionist, I wasn't really happy with that. I wanted to know it and do it perfect for the next prayer. So I think I had maybe like two hours before um, Maghreb started. So I... Um, got in contact with Osman's brother's wife and Oz had also sent me um, the same video she sent me, which is such a life saviour. I'll link it, the detail, um, I'll link the link of this video below if you're in the same position as me and you're starting to learn how to pray. This video is so, so helpful. It goes into a lot of detail, but it's explained really, really well. So have patience with it because it is so like, it's, yeah, it's really, really helpful. Um, so I watched this video again. I rewrote out everything. So it made a little bit more sense and it was easier to follow. And then um, I was just practicing again my pronunciations. I was rechecking them and listening and then, you know, sending voice, WhatsApp voice messages um, to, again, to Osman's brother's wife, who is really knowledgeable and has a lot of experience. Um, and then um, Maghrib came around and I got through it. I did it um, obviously with the guidance of my notebook um, and it just felt so good. And it was just the starting point for me of, okay, I'm officially now a Muslim. Like for me, that was something that I really wanted to do for a long time was to learn how to pray. And now I knew how to pray and it was only going to be, it was only going to get better from there. And my relationship with Allah from there was only going to grow stronger. And I was really excited for that. So um, as the week went on, obviously I was um, doing my five prayers every single day. And by the same time next week, so it was the next Monday, so it'd been a week since I took my Shahada, I knew everything off by heart. I didn't need the notebook anymore. I knew the first surah of the Quran. All my um, pronunciations were, um, you know, on point as to what they should be. And I was really enjoying prayer. I was, I was loving it. I, I was really excited to pray and then for the next prayer. And that obviously made me want to learn more. So I went on to learn another surah of the Quran and that took me probably another week to learn. And obviously I'm still um, continuing on that journey and I'm learning more and more. And it's just, yeah, I'm loving it. I'm, I'm really, really enjoying it. And what I will say is from watching other videos online and also just speaking to different people, um, there's been a difference of opinion. A lot of people have kind of said, oh, just like start off slowly, you know, don't, you don't have to start doing your five prayers a day, which, you know, you don't, you take it at your own pace. But just from my experience, I would definitely say if you have the opportunity to and um, you're willing to kind of throw yourself in the deep end, doing the five prayers a day is what helped me learn it. And I think it's human nature. You're not going to enjoy something if you're not good at it. And if you're not practicing it and practicing it and practicing it, you're not going to get good at it as quickly. So by doing it five times a day, it will just help you get better and that will make you want to pray more. So if you're in this sort of similar situation where you're starting off to pray and you're only maybe doing it like two, three times and you think, oh, when I get better, I'll do more. Try it, throw yourself in the deep end, try doing your five daily prayers and like it will help so much and you'll just have like the best feeling. So that's like my little piece of advice that I can give anyone in a similar position to me um, and at the beginning of their journey. So moving on from my prayer, equally as important as prayer for me was learning about the religion. Obviously I had like a really basic understanding of Islam and I knew the fundamentals of Islam, but I really wanted to dive deeper and learn more. 
I love to read. I'm a big reader. So I reached out um, to a couple of people and they sent me a list of really good books to um, purchase and read. And I will put all the details of the books below and I will do a separate video inshallah of those books because they are so good and they gave me such a good like round off of Islam and I like I learned all about the history of Islam so I'll go into it all more in this other video um I hope that will benefit some people so keep an eye out for that but yeah so that's how my journey is growing at the moment as well is that I'm just trying to read and learn as much as I can and um you know I'm just I'm just praying that my mind remains open and that my heart remains open and just I can absorb as much as I can um so yeah so now let's move on to my reactions of family and friends so the first family member i told that i accepted islam was my sister and as i mentioned in my previous video there was a bit of a change or um there may have been a bit of a change so there was a change um she originally said when I first approached her about it that she would support me no matter what. Um, you know, she would never understand my reasoning, but she would always support me. And then when it actually came to me telling her, she was just really surprised. She said she was super shocked be for two reasons. The first reason was that I knew how much it would upset my mom and I did it anyway. And the second thing was that she never knew me, knew me to be a religious person. And not only had I found this new religion in, in my heart, but I had accepted a religion in her opinion. And I think in a lot of people's opinions is quite a strict religion and it has a lot of do's and don'ts. And obviously as Muslims, we know that the do's and don'ts are logical and there are very good explanations for them and it makes sense. But from an outsider's perspective and just having a very like basic outlook on it, it does look quite restrictive. And that's kind of how she sees it. And the restrictions and the do's and don'ts didn't line up with the person that she knows me to be. So she just didn't see me and Islam fitting, if that makes sense. Um, so I left that conversation feeling really deflated and not as supported as what I wanted to be from her. We have had conversations since that one that have gone a lot better and she did, I think she had time to kind of reflect and process what I'd said and she's been so supportive and she wants to hear all about my journey she wants to hear all about me learning how to pray and i'm currently learning arabic so she wants to hear all about that i think the biggest thing for her is that she doesn't want a religious debate every time we get on the phone she doesn't want to hear about islam versus christianity she's very much in the um, opinion of she's got her religion i've got my religion and let's just leave it at that so that's kind of where we stand at the moment. She's super supportive and we can talk about it and it's not uncomfortable, it's not awkward, it's it's normalized for her, which is really cool. Um, then I told my dad and my stepmom, which again, from the previous video, you would know that they're really chilled out and they're really supportive no matter what. So when I told them that I took my Shahada, they were not surprised and they kind of just said, well, yeah, we knew that that was coming. You know, we're really happy for you you know, good luck on your journey type thing. So um, that their support just only got grew from there, which I didn't think was possible, um, but it did. And we had a conversation recently and it was about Christmas. So they approached me and they said, obviously, you know, you're not going to be ce celebrating Christmas this year, to which I responded, no, I won't be. Um, and they then said, well, Obviously, we would normally get you a Christmas gift, but because you're not celebrating it, we we went and we looked up when we can give you a gift. And from our understanding, we can, you know, you give gifts and accept gifts during the time of at the end of Ramadan, so Eid. So, you know, we'd like to give you your gift um, for Eid now because we really want to give it to you now, but Eid's too far away. <laughs> so... 
that was really, really warming. And I get emotional thinking about it now because I just left that phone call just feeling so loved and so supported. And I just knew that they knew that it didn't matter what religion I followed or what, what I believed in. It was, I was still the same person. I was still me and they loved me regardless. And that was just the complete opposite to um, the reaction my mom and my stepdad had. And um, as, you, as you recall from the last video, that's who I predominantly grew up with is my mom and my stepdad. So when I told them that I accepted Islam and I took my Shahada, they said that they were really disappointed in me, that it was just another bad decision in life that I'd made, that what would their neighbors think, what would their friends think? And leading on from that, they said that, you know, I shouldn't be sharing it with anyone. This isn't something that I should tell people. This is something that I should keep to myself. Like, don't put it on social media. And I mean, of course, I'm going to be really upset and I'm going to be really hurt by that, that they don't support me. And not only do I not feel supported, but I also now feel like I've done something wrong. And... I've always kind of, with my family, I've always kind of reverted back to my childlike state where I hate disappointing them and I hate upsetting them. And again, I, I, I think that's normal, but I really remained in my adult self here. And even though I was sad that I disappointed them, I didn't regret my decision. I didn't, I didn't once think, oh my gosh, have I done the right thing? Like I stayed so true to myself and I stayed true to my, my faith. And, you know, they had loads of questions and, you know, they, they said some really like not nice things. And I think to give you <laughs> the best way to summarize their opinion and perception of Islam is they quoted to me the typical stereotypical quote of, not every Muslim is a terrorist, but every terrorist seems to be a Muslim. And they didn't mean this in an awful way, but it's just the perception they have because the perception they have, unfortunately, is very narrow. And although this really upset me, I had to remember that I was in that position not that long ago. So I was kind of able to understand and I was kind of able to appreciate where they were coming from and not get angry with them. And I knew that I had to have patience with them. Um, so, you know, this is, this is going to be a continuous battle. This isn't going to be like an overnight fix. And we, um, we've had conversations since then. We talk pretty much every single day, if not every second day. And it is still such an elephant in the room. We don't talk about it. And if it is brought up, it makes them feel so uncomfortable. Anything that is brought up around Islam or my reversion or anything to do with um, yeah, Islam, it just you can see it on their faces and you can see it in their body language. They just immediately just get so uncomfortable and they just don't want to talk about it. And... You know, even the, I can give you an example of, as I mentioned earlier, I started learning Arabic and of course, like I want to share that with them. That's a really exciting thing for me. Um, and when I told them that I was learning it, they rolled their eyes and quickly changed the subject. So again, like it is, it's really awful when they're like me as their daughter, I feel like not only am I not supported, but they no longer like appreciate me and you know accept accept me I suppose is the best way to put that so yeah it is really challenging it's not easy and if anyone is in that same position I mean we know from an Islamic perspective we have to really respect our parents and especially our moms and, and show them such patience and and love them you know no matter what um and I mean, even if, even if I wasn't expected to do that from an Islamic perspective, I still would because, <clears throat> excuse me, because 
as I mentioned before, I was in that place not that long ago. So I can, I can sort of understand um, where they're coming from and I can, I can understand why they feel that way. But the biggest difference between them and me was that I wasn't so stubborn. I wasn't so set in my ways. I was willing to learn and I was willing to open my mind. And then I'm so blessed that Allah opened my heart as well. Um, but yeah, inshallah, you know, there will be opportunities where their hearts and minds will be opened. And I think the best approach for me to, like towards them is just action, speak louder than words. All I can do is just continue to be me, continue to be, um, you know, respectful and they'll see how happy I am and how much more at peace I am and my values. And, you know, I, ho I hope that I can represent um, Islam um, truthfully and, and represent Islam the best that I can through my actions and, and how I treat people and how I treat them. So, yeah, I just have to be patient and um, it isn't going to be an overnight fix. It's not going to be one one night they're going to wake up and instantly feel better about it. Like, no, this, if this is going to be a marathon, not a sprint. So, yeah, there's definitely been um, and there will continue to be challenges. But, you know, I, I have complete faith and I pray that that, you know, they will be guided as I was. Um, so now that I've spoken about my family side of things, I just want to quickly talk about my friends. And this is really simple and really quick to talk about because you can choose your friends. You can't choose your family. So as I mentioned in my previous video, I was able to put the feelers out there and I like told my friends about my nikah and I told them that I was reading the Quran and that I was really getting interested in Islam and I was able to see their reactions to those two things. And if I got a negative reaction, I obviously wasn't really going to involve them in anything from that point on. So all of my friends have been supportive because that's who I've chosen to surround myself with. And again, like that's the biggest thing that I could say and the biggest advice I can give again, if you're in a similar position to me, is that just surround yourself with people that support you and make you feel good about yourself and your decisions. Um, and so many people have been saying like on my comments, you know, surround yourself with like-minded people, surround yourself with other Muslims. And that makes sense because coming from a, like we'll use like the term Western um, side of like life and culture to then coming to an Islamic side of life and culture, it's, it is vastly different. And if you're, familiarizing yourself with more like Western way of things, I think it would be really easy to slip back into that. Um, so yeah, like thank you so much for the suggestions and recommendations of surrounding myself with fellow sisters. Um, that's definitely something that I will um, work towards inshallah. Um, so that's pretty much my journey in a nutshell. Um, you know, I, I could go on and I could talk more and more about this, but I think we'll leave it there.